Hello everyone, my guest today is Agi Marietti. He's an inventor, technology entrepreneur, and angel investor. As the CEO and co-founder of Kong, the API company on a mission to intelligent broker information across all services, he drives the company's vision, strategy, and long-term growth. Before this, he was CEO and co-founder at Meshape, the largest API marketplace, which was acquired by Rapid API in 2017. Agi, you ready to take us to the top? Yep. All right, so what is Kong HQ and, and what's the business model? How do you sustain yourself? Yeah, yeah. So Kong, it's uh, API platforms. It helps you manage, secure, and govern uh, all APIs across your companies. And it's an open source, open core business model. So we have our open source components, which is Kong API Gateway, which people can download and run in production on top of all your APIs. And then we have the enterprise product, which is the service contract platform that manage all those open source proxy and helps you analyze and govern and secure all your traffic. So it's kind of open source SaaS then in that regard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Think about it uh, uh, like building the nervous system, right, of the cloud. Uh, in your body, you have the nervous system, which is peripheral, and then you have the central, which is a brain and spine. And then in similar case, our peripheral components are the open source proxy. And then the, the central part, is, which is the brain and the spine, is the control plane that is the one that we have an enterprise commercial offering around. Yeah, very good. Okay, so help me understand on average what our company is paying on the enterprise side to use your technology. Yeah, it's a six figures and up. Uh, annual base contract value, right? So it's an annual subscriptions uh, where it's it goes from six figures and up. Okay, so I mean, is it fair to say maybe a fair average is you know ten grand a month, one hundred twenty grand a year, something like that? Yeah, a little bit more. Okay, fair enough. Good. And then uh, put this on a timeline for me. When did you launch? Uh, so uh, Kong Inc was branded uh, in two thousand seventeen August. Okay, twice right. twenty seventeen, and that was. Did you jump into this right after you sold to Rapid API? Yeah, it was a spin off of Meshape Inc. Uh, and uh, obviously, two thousand sixteen was kind of internally uh, pivoting, and then two thousand seventeen was uh, also public facing uh, branding and reshape of the organization and sell their old asset as well. That's great. Okay, and so you know, walk me through your first couple customers on the platform, not not the free ones, but the enterprise ones. How did you land those first customers? Yeah, that's an interesting story. Uh, so when we open source Kong, right, from from the core engine of, of the Meshape API marketplace, uh, it, it took a lot of adoptions on GitHub, but but really no commercial at that point, right? But but five months after, at, uh, at the end of 2016, um, uh, the phone rang and it was uh, uh, the center of Medicare, uh, healthcare.gov, uh, back then was Obamacare. Uh, they're all based in Baltimore, and they were using Kong in productions, right, to power all their APIs with the TurboTax to do the programmatic partnership transaction with TurboTax for tax credit for for health credits. And then it was about end of the year, and April was coming up, which is obviously the end of the season for tax. And they know there is a big spike there, and so they decided to to call and say, "Hey, we we love this we're using production, but we need the." Uh, we need supports. And that's really how we started the first commercial customer. We didn't have any commercial product back then, just just the Kong open source. And uh, I think in 30 days from that phone call, we got we got quite a good uh, a good value um, from them. And um, and that's how they start really the first customer by only selling support from an inbound call from Baltimore uh, on the center of Medicare. That's hysterical. OK, so you signed them up. And then how many customers have you scaled to today? Uh, we have about... Uh, more than 130 large enterprise customers. And then go uh, more up the funnel a bit for me. So how many total installs of the open source platform? Oh, installs. So it, downloads is a little bit of a vanity metric, right? Yeah. Because that's why I asked customers first, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that's just perfect because you get bots, you get, you know, Docker images that get pulled in from containers, Docker hubs. So it's now it's quite, but we have like 100 millions there, right at the top of the funnels. And then you have, we have like, um, I think now it's 800,000 active instances running for the one that we can track because the phone home is on and there is no firewall blocks. So there is a lot that we don't track anything after they put into their own cloud. So 100 million downloads, 800,000 active instances, and then about 130 enterprise customers. Yeah, yeah, 800 monthly active instances, uh, which uh, we we don't know. Like, if you decap the peak, we don't know really how many users. This is several, several, several dozen, dozen of thousands. Yeah, and then it's uh, is about 130 large enterprise customers, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the global 5,000, which is the one that that we track. Now, can I take 130 customers times you know minimum 10 grand a month? You're doing north of 1.3 million a month right now. Yeah, it's more than that. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, yeah, definitely more than that because you, that was a minimum value. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When do you think you break two million a month? Do you feel like that's doable this year, or is that an uncomfortable stretch goal? 
so so we, we are uh, well past the 10 million, right? But we are obviously under 100 million in ARR. Uh, so, so it, it, we're tripping the business this year. Uh, so we're getting, um, we're, we're definitely passing those those points this year. Sorry, sorry. My question was, when do you think you pass two million in monthly recurring revenue? Oh yeah, we don't we don't disclose the exact dates on, you know, when we track those those kind of numbers. Okay. Well, I guess again, all I'm asking is, your goal by the end of this year is to like, what's an uncomfortable stretch goal for you? To is about tripling the business from where where we were last year. But, uh, and you know, again, we, we're between ten and and a hundred million run rate, but we don't we don't disclose specific numbers. Where, so we can understand growth rate over the past twelve months. Um, again, you're north of ten million today in revenue. Where were you a year ago? Were you down at like three or? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We we grew five times from 2017 to 2018. And then again, 18, 2018, this exact month last year, you feel like you were down about, you said about three times smaller than you are today. So somewhere north of 3 million in ARR? Uh, in that in that ballparks, but uh, yeah. Where's most of that growth coming from? Is it coming from expanding the enterprise accounts or getting new customers altogether? Um, so last quarter, it was half and half, but it was an anomaly. Uh, usually it comes from new logos because it's still... Uh, very early days, right? So we grab new logos and 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 a lot of cast. Most of the cast have been had in the last twelve months, so right, they're not even a renewal time. And um, and last quarter, for example, was the zero churn and was a lot of massive expansions because of two large customer really expand substantially. But uh, on average, it's really it's really ninety ninety percent still ninety five percent a new logo. I think at the end of the year. And we end January thirty first. Things will change, and we start to also uh, turn in expansions. But last quarter was um, uh, last twelve months average of last quarter. Like for example, net retention rate was one hundred thirty three percent, and in quarter was one ninety five percent. So it was it was a little bit strong for in quarter. But we want to stay above one hundred thirty percent net retention rate. Yeah, if you look at the past twelve months, have you been above one thirty net retention? Yeah, one thirty three. And peel that onion back for me. So what was gross re- a gross revenue churn? Uh, well, last quarter was zero. Uh, so on average, we, we churn less than that, less than five, seven percent on terms, on terms of dollars value because the product Over what is very period steep. of time, monthly or last, quarterly? Last 12, last 12 months. Okay. So seven, seven percent revenue churn over the last 12 months. If you have one thirty net, that means your expansion on average is about 37% in that cohort. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. That's great. What upsell axes are you upselling against? Uh, so there are two ways, right? There is the upsell and the cross sales. Uh, last quarter we got lucky, got both in a way, uh, but it's usually um, it's usually an upsell, right? Where you you usually to buy more of the technology, and and we price by uh, three different dimensions, which is numbers of users that use the platform, number of requests that goes through the platform, like the throughput of the traffic, and then numbers of microservices or service that you add through the platform. And then one of those lever usually tend to go up over the over the 12 months. And so that's, that's they buy more of those uh, kind of Which buckets. one is most effective for driving expansion, requests and throughput, microservices or number of seats? Uh, well, the microservice, we just had it. It's like, so too early to say, but, it, but I think that's would be the most powerful one. Interesting. Okay, uh, round out your team for me today. How many folks on the team? Overall, globally, it's about uh, 140. Okay, 140. That's great. And then have you bootstrapped the company or did you decide to raise? Uh, we raised over 71 million. Oh, I Augie, I liked you so much. And then you tell me you take all this dilution. <laughs> well, the, if you think about it, our company before Kong, it was misshape, right? So if you go back to that day, that's the whole amount because we were running a different company before. And then okay. we have to spin up Kong. But there is there is like 10 years of blood <laughs> we got here. It's not like start, go, and race. Okay, but on the current cap table today, there are investors listed. And those investors all together have put in about 70 million bucks. Yeah, well, we clean up a little bit. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> We can have a little bit uh, lately, but uh, but well, yeah. You, but you is, sold Meshape, right? I mean, you sold it to Rapid API, so yeah. So, so no, but that that was that was an asset sale, so it was faster to do through an asset sale. So we sold the product and the business, but we didn't sell like, like the cap table kind of thing of the corporation. Oh, okay, okay. So you sold an asset to Rapid API. This is basically this, you know, a renamed version of Meshape is now Kong. Exactly. I a see. reboot, yes, yeah, a reboot from from the region uh, regional cap table, and when we did, did some cleanup over time. When did Meshape launch? What year? Uh, Meshape has uh, the one that was sold. We launched in um, 
public launch was 2012. Okay, got it. So you said 2017 for Kong. It really was 2012. I mean, that was the start. That was the start of the corporation, right? Yeah. Even if we were doing something totally different, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from 2010 to 2016, it was all API marketplace and Meshape. And then through 16, when the first contract came in, then we, we went all through Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, much, we, we just, how much capital has come in post-2016 in terms of raised? Uh, so that was 18 million one. And then we raised... 43. Okay. So, so 60, 62, 63, something like that million total. Yeah. So majority has come over the past two years. Yeah. Yeah. Basically for the first five, seven years of my shape, the business wasn't really growing very fast and we're kind of like, you know, keeping the lights on and, and we're between 15 and 20 employees headcounts and we were trying to make the money last as much as we could, which was a 6.5 million series A and we last for years for decades, almost a decade. Uh, and then, and then when Kong took off, then, then we started to accelerate the business and, and raise the fan, the additional growth. Yep. Talk to me about how aggressive we're being on new customer acquisition, right? So kind of first year ACV is North of called $150,000. Are you willing to spend that full ACV to get the customer for a 12 month payback? Or are you more or less aggressive? So this, this is how the model works today, right? We have this open source flywheel, similar to open core business like Elastic, uh, Ashley yep. Corp, Confluence. They all, all the business has been booked today. It all went through inbound. So somebody goes on the website and either contact us or do request a demo or contact sales, right? So it was dry inbound. Of course, as you grow and the numbers gets big, you need to also start to have a little bit of outbound and put more money in. Uh, but But the margin are are pretty healthy, right? We're talking about 85% gross margin. And most of that was booked about inbound. So there is really not much, at least in the last 12 months, there wasn't really much a lot of marketing spend, but things will change in the future. And we still have to figure out what what kind of numbers we want to to put on an outbound fire hose and figure out well, the I match. imagine you've made some some sales higher at this point. Of the 140, how many are sales or AEs or CS reps? So quota carry and um, a lot are obviously in the last few uh, three months, so they're not ramp, but all in globally, it's about now 15. Okay, so you have some pr- like hypothetical pro forma you hope these folks hit. You've modeled a quota attainment of like 4x their base plus comp or something like that. Yeah, four, they're, four to five. Four to five X, yeah, that's pretty typical at yep. your stage. They're ramping up, but what do you put for their ramp ups? Give them six months? Six months, yep. Okay, so when then you model the fully weighted CAC on people they're bringing in, what, what do you think that is on 150 first year ACV? So you mean in the how much the sales force will cost? You mean the marketing on getting those new logos? Because but, if, but, if you think in fully Cox, weighted, right? no, no, Cox full, fully, not Cox, actually fully weighted CAC. So that includes a salesperson commission. It includes marketing dollars to get the leads. It includes anything that is sales yeah. and marketing or CS. Yeah, and th- so then that will take about twelve months to pay back, right? Okay, that's fair enough. So yeah, you'll you'll to get a new, basically to get a new dollar of ARR, you're totally comfortable spending a dollar to get it. Yeah, yeah, we're about that point, going yeah. to that point. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, um, look, one of the things I'm always fascinated by coming to your scale, I mean, you have to be burning to drive growth. I mean, you are on the VC track, whether you like it or not, that's what you chose. How aggressive are you being in terms of burn per month? Is it like a million per month or two million per month or more? Uh, no, less. Uh, we're, we're trying to uh, invest and grow, but not but not crazy-wise. A lot, though, happens because... Um, but 30% of the deals happens to be cash up fronts. And, Annual deals. And they're, and they're multi-year sometimes, like three years, right? So you might get a lot of cash coming in because we don't have a credit card business. So we might get a lot of cash coming in at the end of the quarter. I mean, the month after the end of the quarter. And that that month, for example, it might be free cash flow, Yeah, right? yeah. So on a gap basis, That's you'll have months. Average. On a gap basis, you'll have months where yeah, you're profitable. Yeah, it's very Exactly. But it's very, it's very, it's not the 2 million barn. It's not the 3 million barn. It's, it's less. Okay. Got it. So let, just to be clear, you're burning again on a, on a SaaS kind of metrics model, not a gap basis. You're burning less than a million bucks per month to drive growth. Yeah. Any, any plans to raise additional capital? Uh, not, not any time, uh, not any time soon. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Uh, Aggie number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, well, the, the, there is a lot, right? There is like the art of war principles, but the one I like a lot, which is more spiritual business book is the seven law of spiritual success, which is not really business, but I applied a lot into my business and in my day to day. So it's a little bit of uncommon answer, but, but it helps a lot on business side too, by having like seven, that. those seven spiritual advantages, I would say, or, uh, coaches. Number two, name a CEO you're following or studying. Um, well, other than the usual success, I think uh, Giannini, 
which was the founder of Bank of America, which was Bank of Italy. I studied him a lot uh, because I grew up in Italy. So these days was obviously very important. And of course, you have you know the modern one like Jeff Bezos. But but I like also Carnegie Mellon. Um, I think Chambers was the best enterprise CEO, Who right? John Chambers. Yeah, yeah. He built he built Cisco, and uh, it, it, it's. Uh, it's quite, he built a, you know, 75,000 people family kind of thing, which is emotional draining, but he was able to pull it out and, and, and build the, the Cisco that it is today. So that that's also quite fascinating how he did it at scale. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Uh, definitely uh, Zoom. Yeah. Number four, how many hours of sleep you get every night? I'm trying to not go under six. <laughs> okay. What's your situation? Married, single kids? Uh, single. Okay, no kiddos? Sorry, I, I, have a, I have a girlfriend, but I'm not married. And yeah. No kids. You're like, wait, I need to correct that. If she listens to this, then I'm, I'm going to be single. All right. <laughs> so, so, so not married, no kids, and how old are you? 31. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, or, or not knew, you know, how long this would have taken. Like, uh, uh, you know, when you're 20, you start like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be as big as Facebook in three, four years. Uh, right. And then you are five years in and, and, and you're still figuring out how to process payroll and all of that. So it, it just, you know, knowing before how long that would have taken, I think, I think having a more reality expectation, but also being naive is probably why we start things. Right. So it's kind of a double, double war. Kong HQ API management started back in 2012 with Mashape, shape. And then went all in on this model, basically an open source model, then sell enterprise customers on top of it. 130 enterprise customers paying north of $13,000 a month. So call it north of $20 million run rate today, scaling nicely, $70 million raised 140 people on the team, 7% annual revenue churn, 37% expansion for 130% net revenue retention, burning less than a million bucks a month, which is great. Uh, again, uh, scaling nicely, growing three X year over year as they continue to use the open source engine to scale, spending a dollar to get a new dollar of ARR. Agi, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan.